The expectations of parents is that education our kids receive in, public, in the public system is accessible, challenging, balanced and engaging. We expect their education to give them the strongest foundation on which to participate most fully in our modern world. I think many parents, although of course I don't speak for all, would accept that teaching kids some form of comparative religion helps them to better understand the faiths that underpin modern societies across the world. What parents won't cop, though, is to unknowingly find their kids being funnelled into a system of spe special religious education because of backroom political deals. Speaker, let me take a moment to explain the current situation. When a parent enrols their child in their local public school, they're given a form that asks them to identify their child's religion. That form is then taken by the school administration and used to create a list of students handed on to special religious education providers. Then once a week, for up to an hour, those students are provided with instruction by a lay preacher, volunteer or other from a registered SRE provider. Those students whose parents did not indicate a religion are provided with minimal supervision to sit in a classroom or in the playground. They are not permitted to undertake any activity which relates to the current curriculum. Put another way, those kids for one hour every week are not receiving an education. Let's be clear, Mr Speaker, that means for over 330 hours over the course of their primary school education, these kids are not being educated. It's a global competitive market these kids are entering, so to me that just doesn't make any sense. Speaker, I've spoken to many residents about special religious education in my electorate. Some are outright opposed to religion being taught in our public schools. Some would prefer it wasn't, but can appreciate that it provides some value for their kids. Others have spoken to me about the importance of teaching these fundamental beliefs and religious stories to their children. Some have raised concerns that SRE curriculum is developed by providers and not approved by the Department of Education and is being taught by volunteers, often with no qualifications or training. Others have been shocked that they have found that their child has been placed in an SRE class when they had not identified a religion. Speaker, no matter whether you support SRE education in our schools or not, these are valid concerns that go to the quality of our public education system in New South Wales. What the divergent views of parents show us is that choice and transparency should be at the centre of public education. But instead, when it comes to SRE in New South Wales, this government is not meeting community expectations and, in fact, is protecting particular interests ahead of the interests of all. Because of a deal be between the Honourable Fred Nile and the other place and former Premier Baird, parents are now forced to negotiate an unnecessarily convoluted enrolment process if they want their children to participate in ethics classes, rather than SRE or just sitting in the playground. The Baird deal was transactional, it was ideological politics at its worst. It means that balance, transparency and parent choice has been removed. Speaker, if those opposite are serious about parent choice, they would not reject out of hand the majority of 56 recommendations of its review of SRE and special education in ethics in New South Wales government schools. Most importantly, they would return the option for parents of choosing ethics classes for their kids on the enrolment form. Speaker, I was privileged to recently observe a class run by primary ethics in Marrickville. I went to the class with an open mind, having a broad understanding of the class's objectives, but not much more than that. I was awestruck by the professionalism of the volunteer teachers, the level of engagement by the students and, above all else, the complexity and worthiness of the material that they were studying. These kids were learning skills that they'll use throughout their lifetime, skills that will help them better understand and empathise the experiences of others. I observed a Year 4 class focused on being greedy. They were presented with a series of scenarios that encouraged them to see everyday experiences from different perspectives. The aim of the class was to learn what it meant to balance our personal desires and wants with those of others. It's heady, advanced, complex stuff, but to my surprise, these kids really got it. These are really important values, Mr Speaker. Some parents will choose for their children to learn these lessons through the foundational stories taught in religious education. Others will choose the superb lessons taught in ethics classes across the state. At the end of the day, this is all about parent choice, and I share the disappointment of parents who feel that their choice was undermined by the actions of this government. There is common ground here. The choices we make for our kids are amongst the most difficult and significant ones that we make. They go to our values, the values we want to share with our children. I believe firmly that when it comes to public education, we must pull back the pendulum and restore the ability of all parents to make these decisions for themselves.